Welcome to the Data Cloud video series brought to you by Salesforce. My name is Simon Connick. I'm a Data Cloud instructor here at Salesforce. In this video, we'll learn how data is the key to unlocking success in today's business landscape. With Data Cloud, businesses harness the power of their data and drive meaningful outcomes. Now, once you've unified your data in Data Cloud, you can start reaping the benefits of your work and consuming or using your data in your business workflows. There are many ways in which you can consume your data, but in this video, we will be discussing segmentation and activation. Now, although there's some overlap in terms of function, segmentation and activation are considered to be two separate processes in Data Cloud. Let's take a closer look at each. Segmentation is the process of filtering data to create useful buckets or populations to understand, target, and analyze customers based upon their interests or their behavior and purchase history, for example. Segmenting your data ensures that you're always sending the right message at the right time to the right audience. Activation is the process of deploying these defined segments with the additional ability to incorporate extra layers of filtering and enhancing the messaging to activation channels, such as Marketing Cloud or B2C Commerce, for example. Now let's talk about segment activation. This process involves publishing a segment to activation platforms. The primary focus is activating a segment with relevant attributes and metrics. Segment activations can be scheduled, and activation targets can be Salesforce, or external platforms. Let's take a closer look at what it takes to stand up a segment activation from start to finish. The first thing you need to do is set up an activation target. This is where your activation is published once it's completed. There are many different options to choose from, including cloud file storage, marketing cloud, B2C commerce cloud, external activation platforms, marketing cloud personalization, and data cloud. You get the idea. Depending on your specific use case, select the activation target that best suits your need. Let's walk through creating an activation target. We will be creating a file storage activation target and a data cloud activation target. So two targets in this example. Go to the activation targets tab, click new. Select file storage S3, then select next. You need to give a meaningful name to your activation target. Activation targets can be named according to their intended purpose or destination. We're gonna name our target audiences underscore RAVG underscore retail. Select next. Then you need to fill out your S3 bucket details. The parent folder, enter the name of the folder where you would like to save activations. We have already created the audience hyphen activations folder and we will use that. Enter your S3 access key and secret access key, which you see on your screen. For file format, enter CSV. We're gonna use comma delimited files here. Leave data space as the default. Select save. Now, for the data cloud activation target, let's do that. So go select activation targets once again, select new, select data cloud. This one's a bit easier. Select next. Set the activation target name to data underscore cloud underscore home underscore org. Set the data space to default and select save and we're done. We're just pointing at our home org here. When you create or edit an activation, an audience data model object or DMO is created for each activation target. Using this DMO, you can understand and analyze your activated audience over time. Use the audience DMO to see when profiles are added, updated, deleted, and unchanged. View profile details, such as the activated attributes, when the activation occurred, and which segment it belongs to. You can leverage activated data without sending it to any other target system by enabling segment activations on Data Cloud Activation Target, which stores the activation payload in the corresponding audience DMO. You can also retrieve the audience DMO data using query APIs or review it in Data Explorer. Now that you have your activation targets defined, let's talk through building segment activations. At a high level, this is how you create an activation on a segment. First, select the activation membership. This is where you will select the object which will determine which audience will be targeted. Next, select contact points. 
Here you indicate which fields and objects should be included. Next, add additional attributes. Finally, further enrich your segment activation with additional context from other objects. Then, publish your segment. In our final demo, let's review how to create and publish segments to activation targets. Navigate to the Segments tab. Open an existing segment. We'll select Dormant Shopper with High Loyalty Balance segment. In Activations, select New, and then Configure Activation. The activation target is audiences underscore RAVG underscore retail. This is the S3 storage activation target which we created earlier. Activation membership is unified individual. Keep the pre-populated option. You can select a different entity to activate it on than what is actually segmented on, but we are not going to do that here. Select Continue. Click the plus select to include an email address in this segment. Leave the default address path. For source priority order, set source to any. Use the source priority order to determine which contact point value is selected for the activation. Then set email type to any. If you don't see source priority order, select view advanced options. Explore the source priority options available by selecting edit. And one additional note, if you have emails from multiple sources, this determines the email that is used in the activation. Click Next for the Unified Individual ID selected attribute on the canvas. Set Preferred Attribute Name to Customer Number. Now we'll personalize the activation by adding additional attributes to be pushed to activation targets. Really, we're designing the payload of this activation. These additional attributes can be used for journey decisions, messages, content personalization, and you know, other use cases. First, we will add direct attributes to the canvas as needed. To do that, select Add Attributes, expand Unified Individual, and drag first name from the left to the canvas on the right. Expand RFM scores and drag RFM combined underscore underscore C onto the canvas. Click the Back button. Expand Customer Total Purchases by Store and drag First Store Purchased From underscore underscore C onto the canvas. Click the Back button. Expand Spend by Customer Visual Builder and drag Average Purchases Value underscore underscore C onto the canvas. We can also add related attributes to the canvas. Select and expand related attributes. Expand loyalty program member and drag membership number onto the canvas from left to right once again. Expand loyalty member currency and drag points balance onto the canvas. Select Save. Update preferred attribute name for calculated insights, RFM combined underscore underscore C to RFM combined score. We are overriding these goofy names we get from the tool to something sensible for the target of our activation. Look at the first store purchased from underscore underscore C field and change that to first purchase store. Similarly, look at the average purchase value underscore underscore C field and change that to average purchased value. Next, under Loyalty Program Member, update the following preferred attribute name. First, set the sort by to Loyalty Program Member ID, and then set the preferred attribute name for membership number to Rewards Program ID. Under Loyalty Member Currency, set sort by to Loyalty Program Member, then select Next. Set the following properties. This is going to be the name of our activation. The name should be dormant underscore shopper underscore UI. The refresh type should be set to incremental, which is, I believe, the default. Select Save. Now let's schedule the segment to be published. Click the segment name to open the segment. Again, we'll keep working with dormant shopper with high loyalty balance. Click Edit Properties, and then click Next. Set the publishing type to be standard publish and set up a publish schedule. Set publish schedule dropdown for 24 hours, start date to today's date, and start time to the closest start time 
to whatever your current time is. But bear in mind, it's important to understand that the orgs that we've given you are for the US Pacific Time Zone, or PST. So make sure you set your start time accordingly. Set the end date to today's date, plus two days. The activation publishing process will start at the time you select it, and can take up to 30 minutes. You can schedule your segment to publish as you just saw, or you can publish immediately by going to Segments and select your segment then. Click on Publish Now. You can also create activations from the Activations tab. Navigate to the Activations tab. Select New to create a new activation. From here, let's validate the published status of a segment. You can validate status in one of two ways. First, from the Activations tab. To check the S3 published status, navigate to the Activations tab. Select the activation name, dormant shopper underscore UI, and look at the activation history. Take a look at the segment and activation counts. The activation count can be less than the segment count if there are duplicate profiles and missing contact points. The active profiles can be less than or equal to the segment count if there are errors. You can also validate using the Segments tab. To check S3 published status, navigate to the Segments tab. Select the segment name, our dormant shopper with high loyalty balance, and review the published history. To check Data Cloud published status, navigate back to the Segments tab. Select segment name, promote online shopping for specific stores, and once again review the published history. Now let's review Data Cloud Activations features. Navigate to the Data Explorer tab and select Data Model Object. Locate Activation Audience hyphen audiences underscore RAVG underscore retail and review the records in the published object. Explore the data available. Review values in the activation record, delta type, timestamp, and other relevant fields. Let's take a look at the segment membership data. If you're not already there, navigate to Data Explorer and then select Data Model Object. This time, pick the Unified Individual Latest object. This includes all profiles that will be added or persisted or removed from a segment during the most recent publish event. And finally, within Data Explorer, select the Unified Individual hyphen History object. Notice that it has the same columns as earlier. The only difference is that the History DMO maintains the historical snapshot of your segment published as well. You can access your segment membership data through Query API. You can create segment membership dashboards as well. So there's a bunch of ways that we can look at this information. Related attributes can drastically expand personalization capabilities in your activations. You can choose up to 30 activations with related attributes. Your segment must contain less than 10 million records to be compatible and you can traverse up to four hops for related objects. And finally, for engagement-based related attributes, there is a 90-day look-back window. Now, we've covered a lot of information so far. Let's review some best practices. When it comes to segmentation, preparation is the key. Having a plan ensures that you're not consuming credits with unnecessary segments. Don't go mad. Additionally, planning your use case ensures that you have relevant data available. Let's talk about data. The most efficient segmentation strategy relies on having clean, valid data. Before you build anything, take stock of your data and confirm that you actually have what you need. If your segment logic is complex, use the Calculated Insight feature. It will define and calculate multi-dimensional metrics and can also aggregate historical events. More generally, review system limits and refresh timings for your segments, as they may vary depending on the specific use case. And finally, it's important to note that while refreshing a segment also refreshes its eligible profiles, it does not automatically publish it. You'll still need to do that. Now let's move on to activation best practices. First, a quick reminder about differences in filtering in a segment filters narrow your audience, whereas in an activation, filters narrow down relevant values with related attributes that personalize the message. Next, let's talk about multiple data sources. 
if you have data from multiple data sources in Data Cloud, default to using unified individual as the activation membership. Selecting individual may result in duplicate entries in your account. When it comes to identity resolution and reconciliation, it's important to note that Data Cloud is not designed to rationalize deduplicate or merge records. Do not rely on Data Cloud to dictate correct contact points. That's your job. This is especially important to remember when thinking about consent. You'll need to ensure messaging consent capture when activating new records to Marketing Cloud because Data Cloud cannot resolve conflicts in consent or subscription preferences. And finally, when it comes to publishing, if you have a large number of Data Cloud audiences, make sure to stagger your scheduled publishing times. In this video, we identified how to use data activations, learned how to prep and build segment activations, and review direct and related attributes. You're ready to get started. You're ready to unlock the power of your data and drive meaningful results for your business with Data Cloud. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics in Salesforce Help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.